Hello, um, this is Mraga Metinokutai and this video is the last episode of this commercial session and we finished the uh, look uh, and then we finalized the looks uh, we, we will finalize the look in this episode and then I will talk about deliveries it will not be a so long uh, video so I will talk about first uh, what do we have uh, we finished the balancing look creation uh, we made a couple of options for the DOP and director after discussion uh, we reached a conclusion like this and this conclusion why because of the uh, uh, because we thought this kind of uh, color contrast will be like we will work for uh, this Mercedes commercial uh, we reduced the warmth a little bit uh, in our um, orange and teal uh, kind of look we reduced the warmth and we made it uh, also slightly uh, softer so we are in this level right now uh, let, let's see uh, once so we have uh, a ba very balanced uh, image you can see it on uh, vectoroscope also here so yeah as you see we have a nice cyan punch in every shot and also in uh, these day daylight, we, we feel the daylight uh, and then here we cut the highlights a lot and we have a nice sky blue and we have a nice cyan punch on this car which is which is looking nice and sleek uh, here the saturation level on this part is a little too much but I like it so I want to keep it and this is also for web so uh, there is no risk of oh, clipping blah blah this kind of risk because web uh, I mean mobile things are capable of showing so much more uh, than broadcast monitors so when you do job when you do work for web only you can go a bit more stronger edgy you can try boosting saturation and if you do the deliveries well correct you will be and your monitor is calibrated if your monitor is calibrated then you will be not disappointed when you see it on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube uh, yeah there are a couple of things about YouTube they, they sometimes they change stuff I I read more these things more like more in these days like bad experience but uh, yeah it happens for example after online they cut the blacks uh, and then they, they, they because of their conversion uh, some of my projects also gone very bad like very very like crushed blacks actually it was not like that so and 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 for example in old days they were like old days means like after tape record the tape we were uh, recording directly to tape and then we were checking before uh, releasing we were seeing the last uh, tape uh, record or how can we say last mp4 we were checking the, these things right now we uh, i mean it may be big post houses like com complete uh, post houses like uh, from start to end kind of post houses. maybe it's still someone is responsible to do so but we have a boutique uh, color grading uh, obviously i mean new studio is a boutique color grading uh, Navin uh, is the owner, Navin Shetty is the owner. So here we, we I mean, they were, they are not sending the final to us, uh, like final output from online machines. That's a, that's a big thing. I, I, I'm always requesting to see, but not, 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 it's not happening. Anyway, so actually this is one of the DOP, um, DOP's duties. I, I think I, sometimes, sometimes I'm suggesting the DOP's check last time when they convert and when they release the file because if you have some strong blacks or crushed blacks all the work we have done in the session is going just like it's, it's just waste so that's the worst because you are really picky about every decision on this beautiful monitor which is sony we are using and then at the end some because of some mp4 correction mp4 conversion this is going just uh, garbage and for me it's garbage but the client still likes it so yeah anyway this is just a parenthesis in this video um 
So the, I, I can suggest one actually conversion method, like from QuickTime, when you open with QuickTime, uh, a good Apple ProRes for to to full to legal, uh, full to legal uh, selected Apple ProRes 422 can be converted very nicely and very loyal to the original with QuickTime uh, software, basic QuickTime. I'm talking about the QuickTime 7 or 8. I mean, you can uh, just uh, check uh, the export settings and then when you do, it, it looks pretty fine for me. I mean, till now I was not so, uh, I was not disappointed. So that's a good way of converting 422 to uh, full legal 422 ProRes to uh, MP4 or H.264 uh, codecs. So, okay, we watched this and yeah, we, we liked it. Maybe I want to add last small touches, which uh, are, I, I like softer look. So how we reach a little bit softer. I'm talking about edges, edge softening. So that I'm going to grain controls in base life. In base life, it, like, it's so similar to resolve grain also. Uh, but I I like it because we have different channel spreads also in like in, like in result actually there is not so big difference. Ah, rollers are there and film response is there. Film response wide roll up leg roll. These are not in uh, result as well as well I remember. Uh, you can change the grains uh, color data with this uh, these tools. This is also fun. I mean fun to do because sometimes you can have cyanish gray, cyanish grain, and this can slightly change overall feel, like a minuscule change, but it's looking organic and beautiful sometimes. Uh, but you really need to like invest some time to uh, make correction in this grain, uh, especially for like periodic looks. You can use this grain grain tool very efficiently, grain and also diffuse and also like. Uh, how the uh, diffuse is there and texture of course texture texture equalizer is very nice to create soft edges i mean i'm talking these kind of edges like these edges are blending more when you use these tools when you for example when you have green screen uh, uh project uh, blue screen project i mean comp project uh, to blend the edges a little bit, you can use matte tool and add grain and also a little bit diffusion and you can reduce the edge feel, like cut feel, cut out feel using these tools. Anyway, we can talk about these things later also uh, in uh, dedicated videos. So yeah, I added some, I, I like adding some grain at the end. Sometimes uh, uh, I do this, how? I will just make a layer. Okay, let's let's remove the screen. Huh. So and in this uh, layer we have eight different uh, slots. I we can say. And then I am using I'm I'm choosing grain here like that. And I'm mostly adding like zero point eight or yeah nine or something like that. So we have like nice grain texture like here this this is a this is a very tiny grain it's not like creating some additional filmic feel but I mean additional periodic feel but oh, for me certainly it adds slightly like organic feel sometimes people especially say don't add any grain so say okay I mean yeah you want something very neat and digital okay fine so it's uh, film response is uh, also changing the grains uh, grain structure like like you see I mean I don't know if you are able to see but uh, here I can show you if this is film response uh, so it makes the grain a little softer if you increase a lot and also white roll off you know white roll off uh, the, the, the grain on whites grain on blacks you can change it and all digital film stocks have different values of this kind of roll off so it's very useful in that sense and channel correlation it's reducing the color on in the grain if you for example here we have a very harsh grain and in this we have soft softer channel I mean uh, for example let's yeah now we have reds in the grain uh, let's put this right now we have red and green if you channel if you reduce the channel correlation it's they are all black and white right now we have black and white grain only so channel correlation works like that so 
Yeah, in the big picture, let's see. So this is, yeah. So here, channel correction adds the color of the grain, like you see. This is full, this is uh, zero. Anyway, this is a, uh, too much time it takes uh, explaining these tools. Okay, well, right now I added some grain, like this much, and you see, it's making our vector scope like a uh, like a wool ball, you know. Like there are there are tiny particles here. Uh, so I mean, I will. Uh, this is this is the grain effect. So and I mean this uh, same thing is when you see some uh, in the shadows, for example, uh, if you have noise, you can understand by looking at these areas. At vector scope, if you see such things, that this means you have some noise in your picture, or I mean digital noise. So then you can figure out how to clean it. So this is just a clue. Uh, if you have noise, it's not so sharp this thing. So anyway, we saw it in a like reverse engineering mode. We saw we added grain and we saw this tiny uh, things like a wool ball. Anyway, let's go to. Uh, add grain here and I want to add it blur a little bit here for example I do at 8 0 0.8 mostly sometimes I increase even more uh, or less but 8, 8 is good 8 is, 8, 8 is not bad and it gives this slightly blurry feel like that like this and you see the edge? I, I like this, I like this feel because otherwise it's so, it's very cut out, cut, cut, cut. You see this uh, next to eye, for example, sometimes when it's sharper, even it's even more. It's the blending is, is better in this. Uh, that's why I add this blur and top of it, I add grain. And on top of it, I might add sharpen uh, here or before, sorry. this this yeah yeah maybe a little bit less and the radius slightly less so this makes the image uh, at the same time like soft and sharp like I mean sharp in that uh, it, it's just it's blurred but uh, edgy like the radius it's like Radius is high, and in that that kind of sharpness, I'm talking about not my not not, not making crispy. Not cr crispy isn't some not something I like. Uh, so here we have this kind of, and also if you add uh, sharpness in the beginning, like in the top of the uh, image, also it uh, it adds that little sharper feel. For example, in the finer details, you can add like this. You see, for example. If I increase the sharpness here on the, like below uh, of the LUT, then look, look what will happen. Oh, the edges are going crazy. The, 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 the contrast between dark and high areas are going crazy because LUT is making linear as like the thing. So that's why uh, I suggest not to do so much uh, below LUT. So, so let's go, to, but here you can make finer sharpening, sharpening uh, in the beginning. Uh, so I use like this mostly. Uh, just after the footage, I use sharp. So anyway, let's go to, uh, let's copy this, sharpen, and uh, select right, stack top, stack top right. Very nice. So we have sharpening in all shots and I'm copying this sharpen also uh, this sharpen also in all shots very nice yeah I, I, I kind of like this kind of uh, little bit grain and blur feel and because of that right now it's not playing very well and also I think uh, in scene settings I didn't open I disabled the uh, caching. Maybe that's why. Uh, so, yeah, it looks nice, nice and soft. And, and in, when it's small, compressed, 
it will look even better uh, because of the softness it, it will look pleasant so and also this blur affects very nicely the bloom areas the, the bloom parts so okay for me this is uh, uh, a good thing to render, a good uh, end for this commercial. So right now let's go with rendering. Okay, what are we going to do in for rendering? We They want DPX, they will take it to online machine and they will add the graphics like Mercedes iPhone blah blah stuff like that. So we want to give them lossless. So how can, how, how we do that, how do we do that? I'm selecting this, okay. After this, we can go to timeline sort, which is right here, right here, and it's all set timeline sort by timeline position, each second uh, shot second split. And if you click start sort in base light, this is very very useful and very efficiently you can manage to sort uh, timeline in, in many many th many things. I will not spend time on explaining this right now, but so many things uh, making it easier. This tool making things uh, very easy. So yeah we add handles like two seconds handles uh, and end like start and end uh, automatically it will sort out and then we are rendering right now i will not i will i will skip that part so let's go to render manager okay so in base light selected your first first thing is selecting selecting shots like this and here you can see the frames these are timeline frames frame numbers and then we are going to sequences and we are selecting dpx dpx for my big indian little indian preserving we, we select always big indian and compression oh nothing i first time i see this big span compression uh no idea what it is so yeah let's go to resolution mostly they want as input format which is 3k 4k here i guess let's see in seconds uh, oh yeah, because I rendered the image to work. Uh, it was a 4K image. I rendered HD to be able to show, maybe like demonstrate the color grading session. Like that's why it's uh, HD right now. Uh, so I am going to select use input format uh, and resolution is high. Render color space Rec 709 because we are seeing Rec 709. On, on the monitor, not on this monitor, actually real rebroadcast monitor, we are seeing Rec 709, uh, 2, 4 gamma. But for example, if you are working for web, then it's better to change the render color space. I mean, in the beginning of the project, uh, I mean here, let's go to simple. Oh, it's here, right behind this, yeah. Um, graphical rendering, Yeah, here, weaving color space here. This was just hidden there. Oh, Rec 709 is this. So I always select this when I work for broadcast and also web together if projects are for together uh, for both uh, mediums. And uh, for example, only but only for web, you can go to, for example, Apple as sRGB display, 2 2 gamma. This is, this is I mean, if your display is, uh, Mac or some other thing, some other desk, like uh, I mean, not broadcast. Then you can select two two gamma and work with that. So that's also make things easier to see what you see, what you get is uh, more pos like possible uh, to do that also. Like according to your monitor, you should select that weaving, uh, weaving uh, color space, uh, basically. So, and then you need to render uh, with same color space to render what you see, which is render color space for X709 because I saw, I saw it like that. So, and then we are selecting the folder we want to render in, and then we are going to write uh, W, W means file name, or N, which is tape name. 
So in baseline, these are all like Linux, Linux like uh, codes. Uh, you can there, there there is a list about that here. These are codes of mostly used things. So you can make permutations of all uh, deliverables like folder name, the first n characters of shot file name, local uh, scene container resolution. You can add these things by writing these uh, letters. You can add here, for example, dot h, which is shot time code, and it adds shot time code at, at the end, end of the n, which is n is uh, file name here, because I rendered, that's why uh, normally it's tape name, I mean, which is camera name, camera, the, the, the footage is original, that's why we see, uh, for example, Alexa uh, name or red data here. So, yeah, let's not go into this much detail in this. And so we selected the folder, we wrote our names, code names with letters, and now we will submit render and then it will open the uh, it will open the uh, queue monitor uh, but right now it will not it didn't because of the uh, things because of because of uh, I mean here it says some fail uh, no shot time code ah yeah because of shot time code there is no shot time code I, uh, that's, uh, H is shot time code but actually there is no shot time code in this because I didn't add uh, so I'm just going to change that shot time code with timeline uh, number, for example. What is timeline number? Let's see, Rex frame number. Okay, F. Let's write F here. Okay, let's see what will happen. Verifying render, verify it correctly. Submit, and it's opening the queue manager here. And now it will finish, and that's it. Let's delete this. So, um, basically, this DPX is the uh, base of, I mean, like mostly used, I mean, we are mostly using DPX. Uh, also, when you are uh, like collaborating via fixed department, I mean, cooperating via fixed department, then you can select AXR also here, uh, open AXR. It's very useful, very uh, like nice uh, codec. It's also uncompressed, as you see, and also it has some exposure change, and also uh, you can. Uh, it's also smaller than DPX, so it's it's nice for exchanging documents, exchanging uh, visuals with VFX and stuff like that. And JPEG also here we have, we can have JPEG so nicely here, and we can yeah give PNG. I'm not talking about these things. Like I said, DPX on sixteen bit is there. And we can, ah, yeah, let's see movies only also. Yeah, for example, we, we can give Apple for S444, exactly very like lossless quality video, uh, quick time movie. Instead of DPX, you can use this also, nothing changes. It's, it's very good uh, codec, uh, lossless, we can say. And use input format high, but in this, uh, you should select the uh, video a lot because this deliberately uses legacy progress ranging where you can upgrade it, blah, blah. So it means, I mean, here it warns you when you do wrong things. Base light is very good at that. Always you can be uh, regulated by base light if you know what, where to check. For example, color space journey is there. If you have a problem uh, in color space uh, conversions, uh, you can easily see here what's going uh, wrong. Uh, if there was a wrong thing, you can see red, uh, written red, like warning signs, or you are doing something wrong, like that. So, it's it's very nice. Uh, it's very difficult to make mistakes in that sense, in baseline, on baseline. So, let's uh, go to video lot, make it full to legal. Legal envelope. Use a video to legal to So let's go to this deliverable. The price. Yeah. So it's full to legal uh, scale right now. Uh, we are making a full to legal scale on, on collect because codec expects that. 
that's uh, how that's how codec express so when you open this press in some other uh, tool in, in some other software it's also making that uh, conversion in it and you should be also keeping in mind press expects legal uh, so you should be checking uh, if it's getting uh, if it is extended again when you put in on any, any other timeline uh, but when you open and convert it to some other uh, codec, it will be automatically uh, doing things. So this is this is a this is the right full to legal and collect the four four four. This is the right settings for giving that. And then uh, yeah, basically this is it. Uh, one commercial we finished in almost um, one hour. I mean I'm I'm I'm, I'm talking uh, a lot. Uh, on an alpha hour maybe, maybe two hours. Uh, so if uh, you have any questions, you can write in this uh, video. I will try to explain better in the next session. Um, next session, we will be starting another commercial grade. Uh, but I can't make the quality better because of the uh, machine. Machine is not allowing uh, any uh, machine admin. Uh, is not allowing any mm, internet connection in this machine so that's why there is no possibility to uh, record the screen so anyway still in the next session I will try to uh, make 4k video maybe it would be a better uh, solution for the quality and yeah for now that's uh, that's the end of first commercial Let's see you in the next commercial sessions also. The next commercial sessions will be a night uh, film, which is again Mercedes, and it will be, it's again shot by Shuvan de Kudorka and directed by Anthony Carberry by Cat Films. I hope to see you in this uh, like short uh, commercial, and we will grade it in the uh, next couple of days. Thank you for watching.